Hi everybody and welcome to our latest episode of Tweedle TV. We are here today at Honnesbury Shooting School, joined by Tweedle Ambassador James Haskell. Okay, so we're, we're here at Honnesbury Shooting School. You, you're into a bit of shooting yourself. How did you get into that and, and when and why? And So I would say when I was about 21, 22, um, a lot of my friends obviously got into golf. I was didn't have the time, wasn't that keen to, to go and do it. You know, anything we have to walk around and do more exercise was sort of terrible. So I started doing a bit of shooting, thought this is great, got my license, and then basically didn't shoot for like eight years. And then I came here to do a filming day with a with a another sponsor, obviously not as good as you guys. Um, and um, Nick Hollick, who owns this place, said you should maybe give this a go. And do you know what? I was missing something uh, post lockdown that I wanted to be competitive at and wanted to learn from. So I ended up get, taking it really seriously. And I would say now I've consistently been shooting for sort of three, four months. Right, mate, you say you've done a bit of shooting. Should we put it to the test and shoot a few targets? Well, you own a game competition business, so you better be absolutely <laughs> lightning, because if you're not, you're going to get hear about it and it's on video. I've got nothing to lose. You're under pressure, Chief. Well, come on, we'll see how we get off. All right. Sure. Let's do it. Pull. Two out of two. Great start. Professional. <laughs> no pressure. Come on then. Pull. Oh, lovely. Easy. Easy money. Easy money. That's why he's the boss of the company. <laughs> You're now obviously a Tweedle ambassador, which is amazing, and um, we're going to be doing some competitions and stuff. What are you most looking forward to about that? Field sport is is kind of your guys' niche. It's something I'm really passionate about. The fact that you know, for the price of a ticket, so many people are getting these sort of mind-blowing set experiences, chances to win stuff, and also the fact is, you've had you know a couple of people win the set, you know, win, win twice, twice yeah. which is normally unheard of in these things. And I think also the fact that it works really well with, with my lifestyle stuff. We're, we're going to do some rugby packages as well. We You've done one at Twickenham. You know, you're changing people's lives and I'm, I'm happy to be part of that. Paul. Oh, sorry. Oh, 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 it's all right, it's all right. Safety first. Safety first, you ready? Didn't say action, that's why. Paul. First miss of the day, that. Rattled it. I've got to miss one, haven't I? Never mind. Pull. You're miles in front of it. In front of it? You're miles in front of it. You've had 77 England caps. Which one of those was the most memorable? For me, it was winning the Grand Slam in uh, 2016 because we'd failed three other times um, to do it and to beat France away in France and to finally be able to lay that market down and get a Grand Slam was was incredibly special and had a huge tear up in Paris afterwards. Did you ever have any superstitions before match day or on the day of the game or any any things you used to do? Do you know what? I, I ended up having a couple of superstitions, um, but only one in particular kind of lasted. I had a chain that I'd wore that I just remember I'd always just wear for every game. So I'd always wear it to the ground, take it off. Um, and yeah, and, and, yeah. That, and, that, and that's what I always did. I managed to never lose it. But things like I, it broke a couple of times and um, it was one of those chains. I remember having to dismantle like a plug from, you know, the plug chains on things with a gold loop, unscrew that from a bathroom just to fix another link because I couldn't wear it and stuff. So that got a bit <laughs> weird, but that yeah, was the yeah. only thing that ever, ever got me. But there was a couple of games that it, for some reason I didn't have it and I, I didn't, nothing happened. So I just got on with it. If you were forced to sing on the bus after a game or in the changing room, what was your go-to gig? For my 50th cap, we were playing against um, Wales at Millennium Stadium, Grand Slam game, and um, we basically lost, got absolutely humped. Um, Chris Robshaw has got up and gone, there's one player that's uh, very, you know, very excited today, he's got his 50th cap, and he'd love to come up here and sing. And I was like, are you serious? There's like oh, Stuart, Stuart Lancaster. Well, I mean, I was, you know, I played, I was, I played five minutes my, for my 50th cap after we were getting pumped 50, 50 points to something. So I was living with the coaches anyway. So I didn't care. I was like, right, this is, you're getting it now. All the coaches like giving me evils, like don't do it. I was like, whatever. Went up there and um, there was all like the uh, RFU tables, WRU tables, all these kind of really high end people. And I just got the mic and went, don't worry, I've got this. You never close your eyes <laughs> anymore when I kiss your, your lips. lips. Got everyone singing, did the whole thing, serenading 
all, you know, the, these, all these women, they were at the time alive, there wasn't a dry eye in the house. And um, yeah, it actually went really well, so yeah. Well, I was gonna ask you for a quick rendition, but you've, you've already no, beat me to it. I know, you it. tried to put me on the spot, didn't you? You thought you were no, gonna no, catch no. me out. You did, listen. I knew you'd have it in the locker. Of course worry, you did, of course you did, obviously. It's not, this is literally not my first rodeo. You got all excited, you've got your gilet on, you come down here to my shooting ground, and you tried to do me in the eye, stitch me up. You've I've been gagging no for a gilet I've all got no this time. I've you've got no shame. Of course weeks. I do. Can of course I have one, Sam? Also, the dog needs something to sleep on. Oh. Well, lovely. So I think you were 18 when you made your wasp debut, were you? Or yes, I was. Yeah, yeah. Must have been quite a nerve-wracking experience. Some big names in the changing room. Yeah, it was. Look, I think you know. For me, I just I had one year pre-season with them, and then went back to school. I did my last year of school, and basically I left school, finished my A levels, and then. You know, a month later, I was back in Poland training and, and made my debut, you know, I think, I don't know, I was like 18 in a couple of days. Um, so that was... Were you the youngest player in the I Premier was, at the time? Yeah, I was, yeah. And the youngest player for Wasps. Um, so they're, you know, now, obviously, they've got, they've got kids coming out of nowhere. So that was, yeah, pretty nerve-wracking, especially as well. I, I played and we actually lost to Harlequins. And um, Rob Howley very famously sort of slightly blamed the loss on me post-game as well, which was a... You know, it was a pretty unusual thing to, to was do. Was that a reoccurring thing out of your career, or what? What people just blaming <laughs> stuff on me? Yeah, well, that's the truth we're going with. Yeah, I'm like um, Alan Partridge. Needless to say, I've had the last laugh though, and I've both certainly bounced back. <laughs> Very good. You've played for quite a few clubs, you'd say, of your career. Which held the worst uh, initiation, and why? Do you know what? I actually escaped pretty much any terrible initiations, to be honest with you. Um, there was, I mean, the first one at Wasps, when every player tried to have a drink with me, and I was only 17, I was still at school, and they went out to a Polish pizza bar. And I remember like trying to hide out of the way, and, and one player coming up to me, I think it was like Alex King, and it was like, Kino, you know, um, welcome to Wasps. Boys reckon you, you know, can't have a drink, neck this pint. So he and, him and I necked a pint. Then like Simon Shaw came out of nowhere, same thing. Mark Denny, same thing. Paul Volley, same thing. And I and I was I'm all right at like chilling a pint, but I, and I, I'm not a massive puker, so I was like filling up beer. And you're 17 at this point. 17 at the time, and it was basically then Lawrence Dalia bowled, bowled over and was like, "Listen, kid, big you know, big lol sniff, big bravado." It's like, right, you know, good to see you drinking. Get yourself, get, get your lips around that. Um, uh, that was a pint, nothing else. That would be weird. And then, um, <laughs> and, he, uh, and then we finished, uh, finished the pint. And luckily, Sean Ebers was like, right, kid, come on, mate. You've had, you've had too much. Like, let's get you home. Walk me, walk me home. And then um, I remember like, we used to stay, stay in these like, tiny shoebox uh, beds that were like, like, basically like a, a sort of a Jacob's cream cracker for a mattress on basically <laughs> like a pile of springs. And I remember like, sharing a room and having to get up at seven that morning still steaming that was probably the worst hangover and worst experience of my entire life so that for initiations would go down as that i'm not surprised oh Okay, so in September 2017, much talk, much talk about game, yourself and Joe Marler had a bit of a scuffle. Yes. What would you refer to that move as? I would describe the that Vulcan as the... Vulcan sorry, death grip yeah. or the Russian headlock? I would describe that uh, as the Vulcan death grip is how I would describe it. I mean, Joe Marler is a master of, um, of being an irritant on the field. He's a tremendous guy, incredible player. Um, I remember the first tackle, he just trod on my leg got up, trod on my foot the next one, got in the way, and then he pulled my, my uh, scrum cap off, hit it up his jumper, and I was like, John, <laughs> you know I'm not having any of it. So what people missed is I actually really liked, first of all, the, the takedown, like MMA takedown, shirt thing, side control, straight on top of him. Obviously, I was giving him a little bit on the floor. Um, all the other lads were coming in, they were pulling me up my shirt, 
and he walked off my scrum cap and then it, and then then he famously squirted water at me and i was like do you know what i'm just not having it and but <laughs> everyone's like you lost your head i was like i didn't i didn't throw a punch went in for the death grip in full vulcan mode like back of the head um <laughs> there's a great picture of marcus smith in the background like that was one of his first ever games like, just like terrified yeah like, what he what, danny care got... like then danny care then as i'm walking off through water on me again and I was like, do you know what? I love Danny. I'm not going to do this. And I obviously then used him to line, sir, you know, you can't squirt water in my face. And everyone was like, oh, he squirted water in my face. And in the age of social media, which, um, you know, I, you can tell I absolutely love, people are still remind me, like, oh, don't let him squirt water in your face as if it's the most original gag yeah. Yeah. known to man. Well. Oh, mate, missed one. That's toilet. These ones are easy. I oh, know they are. Well. There he is, back. back in the room, mate. Obviously, after you retired, you got into a bit of MMA. If you had the choice, who would you rather face in the octagon? Warren Gatland or Eddie Jones? Um, who would I face? I think it'd have to be um, Warren Gatland. Because he's a bit wheezy if you listen to him. On He's a bit of a heavy, you know, so I just don't know if he's got the conduct cardio. And Eddie Jones is like, when he played for Ramwick, he used to play hooker. You'd think looking at me like a scrum half. Yeah, Apparently, yeah. mate, he didn't take any nonsense. No, he's, no. I imagine he'd be small and vicious, like like a raccoon or like a chipmunk. And he'd like get onto you, like, Meh! like ah, he couldn't be able to get him off. And he'd just like- He's a bit of a fitness freak on the quiet. Yeah, 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 yeah. I reckon he'd pull your eye out. He'd stuff. just so, run around you. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. It would be awful. And I really like Eddie. I love Warren Gatlin as well, but I reckon Gat's slower target. Yeah. You know, bit wheezy as I said. Get him on the ground and the job's yeah, done. Yeah, that's what I'd like to Eddie, you know, if you hooked in, you just wouldn't get him off. Man with the spine out question mark at the moment. We're seeing <laughs> the walk in between stands, just I'm getting more and more hunched over. It's game over now. It's game over. Do you know what I really appreciate about that on the first shot was the beautiful follow through? Oh, and all professionals have that. Okay, mate. That's it. Shooting done. Call it a draw, yeah? Call it a draw, boss. Yeah. Well, I know you're the boss, mate. You're paying the bills. If you weren't, I won. <laughs>